Solid. Sadistic Arsonist. Mighty. Sisters that play together. Sparky. Knowledgeable. What, you wanted more details than that? Hey there, my name is Soundrack, and welcome back to another episode of my Don't Starve Reign of Giants Beginner's Guide series. This series is intended for players who are new to Don't Starve, coming back after a long hiatus or otherwise struggling to survive past their first year. I've had several people asking for it, so it's time at long last to do a guide on the playable characters of Don't Starve. As this series is focused on the Reign of Giants version of Don't Starve, I won't be covering any of the characters specific to the other single player DLCs, nor will I cover any characters that are unique to the multiplayer Don't Starve Together. That said, to the extent there are major differences in a character's Reign of Giants versus the DST version, I will at least briefly mention those changes. This is going to be a two-parter as a single episode would have run way longer than I can put together and stay on schedule. In this episode, we'll cover Wilson and the first five characters that are unlocked by experience, namely Willow, Wolfgang, Wendy, WX-78, and Wickerbottom. In the next episode, we'll cover Wagstaff and the last two experience-based characters, Woody and Wigfrid, as well as characters unlocked by specific actions, namely Weber, Wes, and the one and only Maxwell. Do note that these episodes will only be providing a basic overview of each of the characters covered, as a detailed guide for any given character would require its own individual video. So rather than going in deep, I hope to give enough information to get you started with each option, so you'll know what you're getting yourself into with each character, and to maybe help you decide which might best suit your personality and playstyle. As always, if you find this guide helpful, informative, or at the very least somewhat entertaining, please be sure to smack that like button, and remember to subscribe to join the party around here. Also, check the description for a table of contents with chapter links, let me know if you have any questions about anything down in the comments, and check my community page for weekly updates of my livestream schedule. Now let's get to it! There are a total of 12 characters in Reign of Giants, all of whom, except for Wagstaff, are also available in Don't Starve Together. Of those 12, the only available options when you first start the game are Wilson and Wagstaff, and of the remaining 10 characters, 7 are unlocked by in-game experience, which is earned based on the number of days survived in the regular world or adventure mode, and three are unlocked by performing specific in-game tasks. Every character in the game has a perk of some sort, and all characters, except for Wilson, have at least one significant drawback. The first character most people play as is, of course, Wilson, and he is a fine choice for learning the game. Formerly known as Wilson Percival Higsbury, he was a failing scientist in the real world, but was given forbidden knowledge by Maxwell via a Voxola radio, and was tricked into creating a machine that ultimately led to him being brought into the constant. His voice is played by a muted trumpet, and like many characters, he has bones in his hair which are visible when struck by lightning. Wilson has default base stats of 150 health, 150 hunger, and 200 sanity, with base rates of change for all three and default damage when using weapons. His perk is that he grows a magnificent beard, that can be shaved off for a gain of 10 sanity as well as varying amounts of beard hair, an ingredient for making the meat effigy, which allows you to resurrect when you die much like a touchstone. The beard has three stages of growth that take a total of 4, 7, and 15 days respectively to grow, and these stages provide increasing amounts of insulation against the cold of winter, with the top level being a little bit better than a tier 2 clothing item. However, during the summer it makes him hot by decreasing the effectiveness of his summer clothing. So grow it out for winter and keep it shaved in summer. As of the making of this video, Wilson is identical in Reign of Giants and Don't Starve Together, though who knows? At some point, maybe he'll get a character refresh in DST that will add some additional flavor to his playstyle. Otherwise, he is a great character for learning the game, and is an all-around solid pick in both single and multiplayer, especially for newer players or even veterans who don't want to deal with the quirks that other options might bring to the table. Willow is the first character to be unlocked by experience, can be played after you survived a total of 8 days, and has the voice of a flute. We don't know her full name, but do know that she was orphaned at a young age, was haunted by shadow creatures, as well as mistreated by her caregivers, and then burned the place down before being brought to the Constant. She's in her early 20s now and views life in the Constant as a new beginning, where she continues to burn things to ashes. 
Willow has default health and hunger of 150, but a low max sanity of only 120. Her damage output is default, but she is immune to fire damage, and being close to a burning fire restores sanity up to 10 points per minute with a single blaze. She also starts with a lighter, which has infinite durability, but a lower light radius than a torch. But even it is enough to give her a small boost of sanity, so keep that thing out all the time in the early game to keep her sanity up as much as possible. For Willow's drawback, and it's a big one, is that whenever she is at half sanity or lower, she will randomly start a fire out of her feet, giggling maniacally. If this happens in your base, you can probably kiss a lot of your hard work goodbye. Now you might be thinking that you'll just protect your whole base with Ice Flingomatics, but as we saw in our summer guide, that is very costly in terms of resources and time. It's also far from foolproof for even a single season, making it even less palatable as a long-term solution to Willow's fire-starting antics, because unlike Summer's smoldering, Willow does not give you the courtesy of any sort of a warning. So your best bet is to never enter base, or anywhere else with flammable stuff you don't want to see go up in smoke, if your sanity is at 60 or below. Best way to boost it is with cooked green caps, cactus flesh, or jerky, all of which raise your sanity by 15 per bite. For this reason, it's a good idea for Willow to base in or near the desert for year-round access to the brain-boosting succulents. But what about standing near fires to raise your sanity when low? Well, individual fires are honestly too slow to really do you much good and are basically a waste of time for that purpose. But you can set up a sanity boosting station by control clicking to drop 20 to 40 individual logs on the ground right next to a nice flingomatic. The logs have a burn time of 15 seconds, so light them up, count to 10, then flick on the flingo. It'll put out all the logs, and you can then turn off the flingo and relight the logs for another brain boost until you're back into the safe zone. Playing as Willow will, if nothing else, force you to become very disciplined at managing her sanity. You'll want to farm walruses your first winter to get a tam shanter at which point maintaining sanity, even in the caves, is pretty trivial. Overall though, I feel that her drawback is disproportionately punishing compared to her perks, especially if you're learning the game. And I'm not gonna lie, in single player she's probably one of my least favorite characters. Oh, and pro tip, do not pick Willow when you're just starting to play in Hamlet. In Don't Starve Together, however, she can be quite a lot of fun. She loses the fire starting drawback and is instead more susceptible to the cold. She can also cook food with her lighter, which has limited durability, but can be recrafted. And she starts the game with her teddy bear, Bernie. This little guy provides a small sanity boost when held and a little bit of insulation when equipped in the winter, and he also turns into a giant beast when Willow's crazy, and will taunt and fight monsters, including shadow creatures. With 2000 health, he's pretty tanky, and his attacks do a nice 50 damage per hit. So yeah, Willow provides interesting added challenges in single player which can lead to frustration, but if you like that sort of challenge and her snarky attitude, she might be the one for you. But she's otherwise a solid pick for DST where she's quite a bit more fun without the randomly punishing drawback of single player. Just be prepared to suffer more in winter and spring in the multiplayer version of the game. Next in the XP lineup is Wolfgang, who unlocked with 16 days total experience. We don't know much about his background, for as of the making of this video, he has not yet had a DST character refresh or an animated short. His name is likely from Germany, and from his comments he may have grown up in France or maybe Russia? He seems to have been in the military, and more recently he worked in a circus where he performed as a strongman. Beyond that, we don't know much about him and have no idea how he ended up in the constant, though he may have had a run-in with Maxwell when a passenger train crashed into a broken down circus wagon. Wolfgang is the undisputed king of combat, brings some interesting new mechanics to the table and is currently the same in both single player and DST. His voice comes from the tuba, and he has three physical forms that are activated based on how full his belly is, which can go up to a whopping 300 food points. At all levels, his sanity goes up to a max of 200, but his health will vary based on which form he's in. At 100 food points or less, he is in wimpy form, where his max health is 150, he deals as low as 50% of normal combat damage, and he moves as slow as 90% of normal speed. 
The only upside of this form is that he digests food at a slower rate compared to his other forms, but even at the lowest will be the same as the default rate of other characters. This definitely doesn't make up for the drawback, so wimpy form should generally be avoided. Between 100 and 225 food points, Wolfgang will be in his regular form. His maximum health will be 200 and he has default movement speed and combat damage. For general day-to-day -day activities, this is where you'll usually want to be. But his real power is unlocked when his stomach gets above 225 food points and he enters mighty form. Between 225 to 300 food points, his maximum health will scale upwards from 200 to a max of 300 health. He will also get a damage bonus that will scale from 125% up to two times normal damage and he'll move 25% faster. Keep him topped off with a full belly and he is an absolute beast in taking down anything that crosses his path. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of calories to maintain that level of athletic performance and consequently he digests food three times faster than normal when his stomach is completely full. His rate of digestion decreases as his food points go down, resting at 1.5 times normal when he reaches 225 food points, where it will stay as long as he is in regular form. Wolfgang's other drawback is that he is afraid of the dark and scared of monsters, both of which will cause him to lose sanity about 10% faster than other characters. Also, mismanaging his forms can be dangerous, as he is unable to move when changing forms, making you vulnerable to getting hit if he changes forms while in combat. Wolfgang is a great character if you enjoy fast and decisive combat, where he particularly excels in DST against the higher health bosses that are present in the multiplayer version of the game. He's not a good pick for players who are combat shy, nor is he good if you struggle with staving off hunger though, as he needs a lot more food compared to other characters. Unlocked at 32 days of experience, Wendy is a personal favorite of me and my wife, so much so that I made a special tribute to her and her sister, Abigail. Twin sisters, Wendy and Abigail's father is a man named Jack Carter, who just so happens to be the brother of a certain William Carter, making the sisters the nieces of none other than Maxwell himself. We don't know for sure how Abigail died, but her passing caused Wendy to become quite depressed and to seek a way to be reunited with her sister. Her voice is a very somber alto flute. Stat-wise, Wendy has default values of 150 for health and hunger and 200 for sanity. Because she's a child though, she does 25% less damage than most other characters, but she also suffers from 25% less sanity drain due to darkness. Her main perk more than makes up for her combat weakness against most foes, and that is her ability to summon the ghost of her dead sister, Abigail, who will thereafter follow her around and defend her. Abigail's flower blooms after two to four days at the start of a new world or after Abigail is defeated. When any creature is slain while the flower is in bloom and placed on the ground, Abigail will appear at a cost of 50 sanity to Wendy. Abigail has 600 max health, regenerates 1 health per second if hurt, and can also be healed with non-food healing items. She has an AoE attack that is extremely powerful against spiders and bees, able to stun lock large numbers of them. It only deals 10 damage per attack during the day, but does 20 at dusk and 40 at night. Be careful with her around non-stun lockable mobs, particularly during day or dusk, as she can be defeated pretty quickly by enough frogs or a herd of beefalo. And she's certainly no match for big hitters like seasonal giants, as they'll make short work of her. Consequently, Wendy will do well to have extra armor for such fights, as they will take longer to defeat due to her reduced damage output. Wendy and Abigail were overhauled quite extensively in their DST character refresh, which allows the multiplayer version of Wendy to craft various elixirs using ectoherbology. She can rile up or soothe Abigail to control how aggressive she is, and Wendy can also de-summon Abigail by attacking her. Also, summoning Abigail does not require waiting for the flower to bloom or killing anything, but can instead be done at any time. However, Abigail will only have 150 health when summoned, which goes up to 300 after one day and 600 after an additional day. 
There are a number of additional changes, so if you want to learn more, read up on the wiki, or check out any of a number of more detailed guides that are out there. All things considered though, Wendy is a lot of fun, and having your sister around really changes up the gameplay. General survival may be easier given Abigail's strength against many of the more common foes, but big monsters like giants will be a bit more challenging, though still doable with proper preparation. WX-78 is a soulless automaton and is unlocked once you've survived a cumulative total of 48 days in the game. His voice is, fittingly, from a, quote, crazy processed synth, and he has a general hatred of all things living. Based on various quotes and bits of lore, it is believed that WX was created by none other than Wagstaff, and perhaps sent by the inventor into the constant before Wagstaff himself found a way to visit. WX-78 starts out with very low stats, 100 each for health, hunger, and sanity. However, he can consume gears to upgrade himself, and at max level has 400 health, 200 hunger, and 300 sanity, making him quite strong indeed. However, it takes 15 gears to reach this level, which can be hard to do until you visited the ancient ruins. Additional perks are that he can eat stale and spoiled foods with no penalty, and he can enter a system overload state when struck by lightning. System overload increases his speed by 50%, makes him illuminated, and gives him immunity to freezing. Getting hit by lightning does drain his sanity by 33 points, but it also heals him for 100 health and lasts for one day for each time struck and can be stacked with no limit. He is also immune to poison in Hamlet and Shipwrecked and is very strong in those DLCs due to the readily available gears in Shipwrecked and easily caused lightning strikes in Hamlet. Other than his initial low starting stats, the only drawback he has is that he is not waterproof and he will take half a point of damage every 3-5 to five seconds whenever he is wet, though this damage can be reduced by partial waterproofing gear. He's basically the exact same in DST, though he starts with higher base stats of 150 each, but still requires 15 gears to reach full functionality. Overall, WX is a very strong character and can be a lot of fun, so long as you can survive past his initial starting state and get some gears for upgrades. Good sources of gears are of course Clockworks, which always drop two gears each, though you'll want to be sure to save enough for things like ice boxes and flingomatics. Because there are always four Clockworks at each wooden circle thing of Adventure Mode, and because eating gears not only upgrades WX, but also restores 60 health, gives 75 food points, and 50 sanity, WX is by far the easiest character to use for completing Adventure Mode. So lots of upsides with minimal downsides, WX is a great pick for all skill levels of the game. Wickerbottom is another character that brings a lot of new mechanics and options to the table. As of the making of this video, she has not had a DST character update or animated short, and there's not a whole lot that we know about her background other than the fact that she was a librarian who likely entered the constant in conjunction with the burning of a New York library. Her voice is that of an oboe. Wickerbottom has base stats of 150 for health and hunger, but has increased max sanity of 250. She starts the game already knowing how to craft everything that normally requires a science station, so things like spears, shovels, backpacks, and log suits can be made right off the bat. And everything that can normally be made with an alchemy engine, Wicker can learn just with a science machine. Her main perk, though, is her ability to craft different books, which provide a variety of powerful effects. Except for Birds of the World, which can only be read three times, each book can be read five times, and each reading drains her sanity by either 33 or 50 points, which varies based on the book. Combined with the perks of other characters, Wickerbottom is a very useful pick in Don't Starve Together, but is also a lot of fun in single player. Her drawbacks are that she is an insomniac and is completely unable to use items or structures that allow other characters to sleep. She also dislikes food that is less than fresh and receives decreased nutritional benefit from stale and spoiled foods. Overall though, these drawbacks are pretty minor, making her another great pick for players of all skill and experience levels while bringing lots of unique strategies to the table through her books. Well, that's all I have time for in this episode, but in the next one we'll cover Wagstaff, Woody, Wigfrid, Weber, Wes, and Maxwell. 
Hopefully you found this video entertaining and informational, but if nothing else, I hope that I've sparked your interest in trying the different characters, all of whom you should definitely test out at some point. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, get out there and don't starve!